Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Welcome back to Spanish Lessons with Professor Jason. In today's lesson, I'm going to go straight to the whiteboard and talk about or answer a question that I get pretty frequently, and it has to do with the verbs llevar and traer, which seem to cause a lot of confusion because of their similarity. So we're going to take a closer look at these two verbs, see where they are similar and where they might be a little bit different. So let's go straight to the whiteboard. Okay, so with llevar and traer, we are talking about two verbs that have similar but not necessarily interchangeable meanings and uses. So we're going to look at, take a look at these two verbs in the context of three different uses or meanings. We're going to first take a look at the opposition between to take and to bring. And this is where I think a lot of the confusion stems from and why most of you have probably come to this video. Okay. So that's going to be our first case, our first comparison. We're going to use llevar. Llevar. When we're talking about someone taking something, okay, someone taking something to a location where that person is not present. Okay. So if we have point A over here, and we have a person here, right? If this person is taking something to a place where they're not currently present, we are in llevar land. Some examples. Voy a llevar, voy a llevar una botella de vino, a bottle of wine, a la fiesta. Voy a llevar una botella de vino a la fiesta. I'm not at the party currently, but when I do go, I'm going to take Voy a llevar, using that future, voy a llevar una botella de vino a la fiesta. Or maybe in a question form. No vas a llevar, no vas a llevar este libro a clase. So again, we're not at class. We're having a discussion about class. And I say to you, no vas a llevar este libro a clase. Aren't you going to take this book to class? Aren't you going to take this book to class? One more example. One more example. Amanda llevó, this time in the preterite or past tense, llevó a su hijo a la escuela. Amanda llevó a su hijo a la escuela. So she's here with her son. She took him to school. So llevar is to take something where the person in question is not present. Traer then, right? Traer has to do with bringing something to a location, right? So traer is bringing something to a location where you are not, excuse me, where you are present. So, with traer, let me back up a little bit. With traer, okay, we are talking about bringing something or someone bringing something, better said, someone bringing something to a location where you are present, okay? So, here's our location, L. I'm here, right? The person speaking, the person in question is here, and I I'm talking about someone bringing something to where I am or to where we are. To me, that's the key distinction between take versus bring when we're talking about llevar y traer. So I get this call a lot from my teenage son. He says, Papa, Papa, right? Dejé mi libro en casa. You can see where this is going, right? Dejé mi libro en casa, like my math book. Dejé mi libro en casa. He's calling me from school. Follow-up question. ¿Puedes traérmelo? ¿Puedes traérmelo? So he's here. He wants me to bring, traer the book to him, right? I'm going to take it to him. He wants me to bring it to him. So it's the difference in perspective and location. Papa, dejé mi libro en casa. O 
se me quedó el libro en casa. ¿Puedes traérmelo? All right, I'll probably get a call like that later this morning. Um, we're going to have a party, right, at our house over here where we are. This is Javier. He's going about his day. And I tell someone, Javier va a traer. He is going to bring, because he's not here now, va a traer la piñata. Maybe it's a birthday party. Más tarde. Más tarde. Más tarde, Javier va a traer la piñata. Or we're over here at the location, right? And I notice that someone has brought you flowers. So I might ask you, we're both at the same location, ¿Quién te trajo estas flores? ¿Quién te trajo estas flores. So again, I'm asking who brought them to the location. Okay, so we've talked about take versus bring. Let's move on to a second common use of these two verbs, and that has to do with the notion of to carry, as in to carry on one's person carry something with you. So in this case, the two verbs can be used more or less interchangeably, and I'll show some examples. Juan lleva, Juan lleva una mochila llena de libros. So he's carrying a backpack full of books. Juan lleva una mochila llena de libros. Okay. Or we might ask somebody, ¿Qué llevas? ¿Qué llevas en la caja o en esa caja? ¿Qué llevas? What are you carrying, right? What are you carrying? What do you have? What do you got in the box? What are you carrying? Okay. Compare that to, ¿Qué traes? ¿Qué traes ahí? What do you got there? ¿Qué traes ahí? What are you carrying there, right? If I see someone carrying something, if I see somebody carrying a box, I might ask them, ¿Qué traes? ¿Qué traes ahí? What have you got there? What are you carrying, right? For me, this use is most common in the present tense with the verb traer, okay? Or, en la frontera, la frontera, the border, like between two countries or states, en la frontera, Los policías, agents of the police, los policías traen armas. Por ejemplo, pistolas, pistol, pistolas, revólveres, rifles, traen armas. So they carry weapons, they're armed, they carry weapons on them. En la frontera, los policías traen armas. Okay? Pistolas, revólveres, rifles, etc. So we can see that in this particular case, when we mean to carry, particularly particularly in the present tense, llevar and traer can be used more or less interchangeably. Let's look at one more common use of these two verbs. And that is, let's switch pens here, that is to wear. To wear. Now a lot of people associate llevar with to wear. We're talking about wearing clothing, shoes, accessories, etc. But in certain dialects, you'll also hear traer, used more or less interchangeably. So let me show you some examples. Mi primo, my cousin, mi primo siempre, so we're talking about the present tense, right? Siempre lleva un traje formal. He's always wearing a formal suit. Siempre lleva un traje formal. O mi madre, mi madre lleva lentes de contacto. Contact lenses. She wears contact lenses. One thing to point out, 
is that many times, instead of the verb llevar, in this case when we're talking about clothing, shoes, accessories, etc., you'll hear native speakers use the verb usar. Mi primo siempre usa un traje formal. Mi madre usa lentes de contacto. Um, Felipe, and I'm going to use the imperfect, right? Felipe llevaba, was wearing, or used to wear, was wearing una camisa, in this case, azul. So we could say, usaba, Felipe usaba una camisa azul. Okay, so llevar o usar. Now, that use of traer as to wear also. A couple of examples. Mira que bonito, mira que bonito vestido trae Angélica. Let's just stop right there. Mira que bonito vestido trae Angélica. In other words, look at what a pretty dress Angélica has on. In this case, I think traer is short for traer puesto o puesta, depending on the gender of the article of clothing, traer puesto, right, to have on. But in certain dialects, particularly in the, this present tense to describe current conditions, you see this, right, trae, right, mira que bonito vestido trae Angélica. Um, another example in the interrogative form. Viste los zapatos que trae a Alejandro? Viste los zapatos que trae Alejandro? Did you see the shoes he's wearing? Did you get a load of the shoes he's got on? Viste los zapatos que trae Alejandro? So again, when we're talking about to wear something, we can use llevar, usar, and traer if we want to emphasize what somebody's got on right now. Okay. All right, so those are three key uses of llevar and traer where they are more or less interchangeable, much less when it comes to to bring versus to take. Now let's take a couple looks. Let's, let's point out a couple things on conjugation of these two verbs. I only point this out because llevar, llevar is a regular AR verb in all tenses. Entonces, llevar es muy fácil de conjugar, right? It's going to be regular in all tenses. I'll just show some yo forms here, right? Llevo, there's no stem change or anything like that. Llevaba, lleve, imperfect preterite, right? Um, present subjunctive, lleve, lleves, llevemos, lleves, etc. Um, llevara, or llevase for the imperfect um, subjunctive. So, llevar is regular, follows the a, regular AR patterns in all tenses. On the other hand, on the other hand, traer is not quite as regular. Traer has several irregular forms here and there. Okay. One example is in the present, right, indicative. The yo form of traer is irregular, right? Traigo, traigo. So, for example, um, if I'm meeting somebody who hasn't seen me for a long time, I might say, it's going to be easy to recognize me, right? Traigo una corbata azul o morada. Traigo una corbata azul. Va a ser fácil reconocerme. Traigo una corbata morada, right? I'm wearing, right? I've got a purple, I like that better, corbata morada. Tengo una, traigo una corbata morada. I've got a purple tie on. Traigo. So irregular yo form in the present indicative. What that means, since our subjunctive form comes from the present indicative, traiga, what that means is we have a an irregular, right? This kind of irregular stem, traig, for the present subjunctive, right? Traiga, traigas etc. Traiga, traigamos, traigais, and traigan. Okay, so traigan, 
because of this irregular yo form in the present indicative, all of our forms are going to have that irregularity in the present subjunctive. Let's see if I can give an example with the present subjunctive here real quick. Um, necesito que ustedes me traigan que me traigan some papers that I left at home, right? Unos papeles que dejé papeles. Necesito que ustedes me traigan imperfect subjunctive irregular unos papeles. O espero my wife calls and she's on her way home and I say, ah, espero que traigas. I hope you bring you see where this is going? I'm hungry. Espero que traigas comida china. Espero que traigas comida china. Tengo ganas de comer comida china. Okay? So that's the present subjunctive irregular form of traer. Um, the preterite, right, or the simple past, some people call it the preterite, indefinite, whatever. The preterite, I just call it the preterite if you watch my lessons has an irregular stem. So the forms T-R-A-J, tra, right? The forms of the preterite for traer are traje, uh, trajo, trajiste, trajimos, they all have this irregular stem, trajisteis, trajisteis, y trajeron. So the preterite is one to watch out for with traer, right? Ayer te trajeron, they brought you, te trajeron uh, los muebles, the furniture que encargaste, that you ordered. Cargaste, you ordered some furniture online. Ayer te los trajeron. Te trajeron los muebles, right? O vosotros me trajisteis, you all, right? Vosotros, vosotros, familiar form in Spain, me trajisteis, mala suerte. You all brought me some bad luck. Vosotros me trajisteis, mala suerte. Me trajisteis, mala suerte. Okay. Um, since we have this, this particular form right here, the third person plural of the preterite, right? You may, be know, you may know where I'm going with this. That is the form that serves as the basis for the imperfect or past subjunctive, right? We remove this part and we add on the ends, right? So, imperfect subjunctive of traer, also irregular. Well, regular in the sense that it follows the pattern, but the stem is irregular. Starts with trajeron, right, from the imperfect subjunctive, from the preterite, third person plural, right? Trajera, trajeras, trajera, trajeramos, trajerais, right? Trajerais y trajeran, okay? Imperfect subjunctive. Couple examples. Quería que tú me trajeras comida china. I wanted you to bring, I wanted you to bring me Chinese food. No mexicana. Quería que me trajeras comida china. No mexicana. Right. No mexicana. All right. Or we're at a restaurant and we're getting frustrated because the waiter is ignoring us or the waitress, the server, ya le pedimos, past tense, right, preterite, ya le pedimos que nos trajera, that he bring us, que nos trajera más agua. Okay. Ya le pedimos que nos trajera más agua. So, again, just a little summary of the conjugations of llevar y traer, Llevar being a regular AR verb in all tenses, and traer having those irregularities we just pointed out. So hopefully you found this little whiteboard presentation to be helpful.
All right, that concludes my presentation on the similarities and differences between the verbs llevar y traer. I hope you found it to be informative and useful. As always, I welcome your questions, comments, and suggestions. So if you do have a moment, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this particular video lesson. Remember, you can find lots more Professor Jason content here and at my website, professorjason.com. And for even more updates, you can follow me on Twitter or like my Facebook community. I'll put that information up on the screen in just a moment. Thanks again for watching. This has been Professor Jason, your guide to Spanish, and I'll see you at the next lesson. Hasta pronto. Ciao.